For the following exercises, sketch a graph of the piecewise function. Write the domain in interval notation. All right, so um, in order to approach uh, this problem, first thing is uh, let's just uh, graph the piecewise function. All right, now remember, uh, we want to take each part of this piecewise function, meaning this there's two parts, the first part and the second part. We want to take each of them and analyze them separately. All right. So first, why don't we take a look at this first part, this first mathematical equation, x plus 1. Uh, only if, though, we're only going to use this mathematical function right here if x is less than 0. Okay? So what we do is let's write out the equation. Now, instead of using f of x, I'm just going to use y. Okay? It's the same thing. You can use f of x if you want, but I'm going to use y here. So y is equal to x plus 1. Now, I'm going to plug in the value of 0 for x here in my equation. I know it can't be equal to it, but what I'm going to realize is that anytime I have a less than or greater than sign, all right, I'm going to just use an open circle at that point. In order to solve for the y value, I am going to use the exact x value here of zero, but when I fill in the circle, or I should say when I don't fill in the circle, that will denote that it is not equal. All right. Now, uh, so y will then be equal to zero uh, plus one. So what we realize here for the first function is that y is 1 when x is 0. So what we do is we go to uh, our coordinate system and we locate x is 0 right here and then y is 1. So we go up one spot right to here and we do an open circle. Okay, the reason why it's an open circle is because it's not equal to. So we got to keep that circle open. So now what we're going to do is plug in another value for x that satisfies this domain. x has to be less than 0. So why don't we plug in a negative 1 for x here? So y will equal negative 1 plus 1, and obviously now y is 0. So when x is negative 1, y is equal to 0. Where's that point located? Well, negative 1 for x is going out to the left, and y being 0 is on the x-axis. So that's that point, okay, and it's filled in. Now we can keep going along with this if we wanted, but I think you realize the pattern that it is a linear function and therefore I can just now draw my linear line here. Okay, let's draw it on out. And it's gonna keep on going forever. Okay, um, let me just tweak this slightly. And there we go, that looks, that looks reasonable. So this will now continue on forever. So you write a little arrow there. Okay, now that takes care of the first part of the piecewise function. Guess what we're gonna do? Now we go to the second part. All right, let's analyze this mathematical function under this domain. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do now y is equal to x minus 1. First, plug in the value of 0 here. We know it can't be equal to, but we're going to plug it in just to see where y is. Now, y would be equal to negative 1. So when x is 0, y is equal to negative 1. So find that location on your graph. So x being 0 is right at the origin, right? It's going to be along the y-axis. And y being negative 1, we now go down to this location, right here. You use an open circle, though, right? Because this says it's not equal to. All right? Great. Now choose another point. Any point you like that's greater than 0, I'm going to choose 1. So now for x here, you plug in a 1. So now it's going to be 1 minus 1. And what do you get for y? It's equal to 0. So when x is 1, y is now equal to 0. So that looks like a point at this location, right? And now all I'm going to do is just draw my line. I know it's a linear line, right? I don't have to keep going. And now I'm just going to draw it on out. All right, so we'll keep it out to there. All right, we'll move, it this, move this over just a slight bit. Okay, that looks nice. And that would take care of that part of the graph. All right, so this is the graph of the piecewise function. Now, it also asks us for the domain in interval notation. So what we need to do is we need to find the leftmost part of the graph and the rightmost part of the graph, okay? Assuming that all the points in between the leftmost part and the rightmost part are filled in, right? We do have one issue. We notice that when x is 0, what's the problem here? There is no value that y obtains, right? Because x is never equal to 0, so we really have two individual domains here. We got to look at the domain for this component and then look at the domain for this component separately. And then we combine them, okay? So the overall domain now for the part in blue 
will be from negative infinity, right? And it goes all the way out to negative infinity. And it goes all the way up until uh, zero, but not including zero. So remember your parentheses here. This goes from negative infinity, exclusive of infinity, that's the point of the uh, parentheses, all the way to zero, exclusive of the zero, all right? And, right, or I should say or, or, that's the union symbol, or it could have been a point over here on the red line. Now that domain is it goes from zero, exclusive of it, because the circle's not filled in, all the way to then positive infinity, right? It's going to keep on going forever in the positive x direction. So that is then a positive infinity. And this is now the domain in interval notation, all right, for that uh, particular uh, piecewise function. Now let's run through the next one, all right? So same approach. Deal with the first part first, and this says f of x is 3 if x is less than 0. So now you're going to say, well, wait a minute, this is a little funky. Where is my x here? Well, there is none. Right? Writing this out, this would be something like this. Y is equal to 3. Okay? It doesn't matter. Who cares what x is? There is no x in this equation. Right? So the graph of the piecewise function will look exactly like this when, aka if, right? When or if x is less than 0. So what does this line look like when y is equal to 3? Well, it should look like a horizontal line, right? Find 3 on your graph. Find y is 3, that is. That's located here. right? And then you're going to draw a nice horizontal line all the way up until you get to the point of 0, x being 0. Okay. Now, you, I drew it. Why did I draw it to the left? Well, because it says for the values where x is less than 0. So all of this is where x is less than 0, right? So when, when x is negative 2, what's y? Oh, it's 3. When x is negative what is this? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. What's y? 0. Okay. Excuse me. What's what's y? 3. And it doesn't matter what x is here. All right. So that takes care of that part. Now we'll move on to the next component. So now it says that um, for when x is greater than 0, uh, we have to then plug it into this particular mathematical operation. So writing that out, we're going to have y is equal to radical x. Now I'm going to find my first point by using the point that they by using the x value, excuse me, that they gave me. So I'm going to type in plug in y radical of zero. Obviously, we know the square root of zero is zero. So when x is zero in here, y is also zero. Where is that point located? Right at the origin. And therefore, it's a filled-in circle though, because you have a greater than or equal to sign. All right, that's what I wrote down here under the tips and tricks section. So now I have that, all right? Now let's, why don't we plug in another value? X has to be greater than zero. We're gonna pick out easy numbers though, all right? You can plug in one if you want it, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna plug in four as my next value. Why? Because I know that square root of four is two. So when X is four, Y is two, where's that point located? So you gotta go out four spots on the X, two, three, four, and then go up two. So it looks like we're right here, okay? Why don't we do another one? Because you might say, oh, look, I get the idea. I'm going to draw my line. Beautiful. No, it's not a linear line. Okay. It's an, it has an exponent to it, actually. Right. It's raised really to the one half. So now why don't we choose a value of nine? So radical nine. And obviously now y will be three. So when x is nine, y is three. Okay. I might have to erase some of this information over here now. Let's see. So just remember x is nine, y is three. Okay, so let's count out. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hopefully I'm going cross-eyed over here, so hopefully I didn't. And then remember, y will now be three. So it looks like here. Ooh. Right? What is this starting to look like? It's starting to look like it it kind of curves downward, but it's not gonna remember, it's gonna keep increasing, okay? It's never, it's not going to, it's not a parabola where it's gonna start shifting back down. All right. But it has this kind of look to it where let's see if we can do this. Okay. It's going to have this kind of look to it where it's going to trail off. All right, something that looks like that. All right, and I'm just going to erase. It looks like it's starting to flatten out on me, which I don't want. But it's going to continue on and upward forever there. So now we can write the domain of this thing. Okay, so uh, the important idea here is that, remember, the domain is the leftmost part of the graph. So this goes all the way out to negative infinity, 
all the way to the rightmost part of the graph, and that goes out all the way to positive infinity. Now, you might say to yourself, what about this point in the middle? You know, do I need to look at this in two separate pieces, or can I look at it as one uh, domain overall, right, with no exclusions? You can look at it as one domain overall. Why? Well, because for an x value of 0, y is actually defined, right? One of the points, there's two points here. Well, really, there's only one point. Uh, this is an open circle, so there's really no point here. But if you look down the y-axis, right, you trace it down, you trace it down, you come to a point here that is filled in. So y is defined when x is 0. So that's part of the domain. We don't have to think of anything special here. So simply, the domain for this one is all the way from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. And that is it. Thank you guys for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe, help us out, and we look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.